everybody. I'll give it a minute for everybody to jump on. While we're waiting, I'm gonna pre-cut some foil. Beautiful foil. For those of you who are sitting in traffic, don't rush. This is all being recorded and you can see this when you get home from work. After dinner, you're just relaxing. There's nothing good on Netflix. That's not true. Uh, Love is Blind. If you get a chance, if you're into those reality train wreck TV shows, you have to watch that one. It is hilarious. Shocker. Let me see something. That's not what I want. Oh my gosh, don't tell me we're not live again. Live chat. Okay. What are my settings? Now the motif notification went out. Okay. YouTube's just running a little slow today. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Bunny. Hi, Chow. Okay, you guys are all jumping on. Great. Okay, I was getting a little worried there. I'm like, is this doing private again? Okay, I see you guys. Okay, hopefully I can see all the chats. As I was saying, there's a, a show I binge watched yesterday on Netflix called Love is Blind. And it's an experiment where they take these people and they separate the boys and the girls. And um, you're supposed to see if you're compatible by going on a series of dates However, you cannot see the person you're talking to. They're in a separate room. And then once they agree, hi, Emily, to once you guys agree to continue dating each other um, after whatever, how many hours together, then um, you, you get engaged and in four weeks you have to get married. So um, I think that is absolutely crazy. I get the idea of it, but they're all, they're all good looking people. Like that show is not a reality because they are all good looking people. Like put some average looking people on there. But, uh, it was an interesting show to watch and, uh, you know, you could clearly see why some people were still single. <laughs> Hi, Kiki. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm trying to be good and prepare here. I got a lot of prep stuff done just to show you guys what I'm doing. This is a 12 by 12 sheet of steel from the hardware store. I bought one of these Mink, We Are Memory Keepers magnets for um, uh, whatever it was at AC Moore on sale or um and so I'm just cut I'm just using the magnet to hold the foil down and then I slice it. Nice and neat like that. See? Pretty. Hi, Stephanie. Netflix, Kiki. It's called Love is Blind. And the other show I was starting to watch with the kids is called um, Lock and Key. That was kind of good. 
Oh, it's okay, Linda. I haven't started anything yet. Hi, Susie. Okay, what I have done today is I have taken the two packs of foiling um, papers, foiling paper pads from Heidi Swap. One of them is toner printed. One is printed with her, um, I guess it's her medium, whatever. It's clear, but I cut these up into six by six um, sizes. And I sent these to Tracy too. Tracy did an unboxing of them, so you can check some out on her page too. And then I cut up some random pieces of Creative Vision stamps foil. So I have that in one pile. And here I have some other foil. So that's mink foil. I'm trying to keep the brands together. And I know one of you, I think, I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Susie who told me, you know, I should write down on the back of my, um, experiments what I'm using and I was like oh yeah duh I probably should have done that so thank you for the suggestion we're going to attempt to do that today this is my mink foil that's right Judy all are welcome oh you're welcome Laura as the uh foiling snob club members There's no um pre-qualifications other than you always want your foiling to look good. You will accept nothing but the best when it comes to your foiling. Um, I do have some announcements. Look, I have a little note of announcements. Okay, I'm gonna write my names on the back. I have a pen, I gotta remember to do that. Um, the mink paint I kept getting everybody to love it's no longer sold it's discontinued so I will continue my stamping experiments um, we'll just have to find something else hi Barbara hi Irene I don't know what we're going to use but we'll find something the best way I have found to come up with foiling um Stamped images is to scan those images into your computer, stamp them out, scan them into your computer, and then print them out with some kind of a laser printer or toner printer. That is the best way that I have come up with. I know there's another embossing powder product out there. Honestly, I'm not going to buy it because embossing powder is embossing powder, and, and it's going to have a distressed look to it. So until I can find a way to get something completely smooth we're just gonna have to work on it um mod squad challenge is coming up next week um don't forget you can join that um i will give you guys a little hint um it's going to be something with wheels that's all i'm gonna say wheels wheels okay um, if you use any kitchen sink stamps, you get extra entries, and it's free to enter. You can win up to, uh, you could win a $25 gift card to kitchen sink stamps. It's a random drawing, so I will be doing that, hosting that next week. Not Too Shabby is going to have a blog hop. Hi, Mary. Um, Not Too Shabby's blog hop. Uh, is going to be featuring the new stamps so I have my videos ready to go I think that's gonna start this weekend um, so keep an eye out for that uh, oh I got approved for an affiliate link with scrapbook.com so I just placed an order with them I'm waiting for those items to come in um, so I will link that for you guys as well. And I just saw the unboxing of the new Pink and Main kit, and I think I'm going to have to get it. It's super cute. It's all birthday stuff. Um, I did order the Cricut Joy off of HSN. I know there's a lot of complaining going on about HSN getting bought out by QVC, and so there was no $5 shipping. Um 
I get it. Listen, I am a stickler when it comes to shipping. I don't want to spend $10 on shipping either, but you get a lot of advantages from ordering it from there instead of walking into your local Michaels and ordering it. You're getting a discounted price. You can put it on your flex pay card and not have to pay interest. So, um, you know, it's just, it depends on how bad you want something, I guess. Oh, I want to keep these separate. These are deco foils I'm putting over in this pile. Um, my links are listed, Mary, on my Facebook page. It's Nancy Stamps 15. When you go to my Facebook page, there's the first note on there has all of my affiliate links. Uh, what else is on my announcement? Oh, so the pink and main. Oh, that's already cut. The pink and main kit is super adorable. I think I am going to order that. I did cave and buy the new Hero Arts kit. It's this beautiful Japanese blossom. Um, kit layered Japanese blossom tree kit so I did get that so I know Hero Arts isn't going to be shipping that out until the 16th I believe uh, speaking of foiling I do have a new package of the brand new colors from Creative Vision Stamps uh, Laura said that her foiling distributor is really, really trying to talk her out of retiring. I am also trying to talk her out of retiring. So um, they keep sending her all of these beautiful colors um, for foiling. So um, I still think she's going to retire. She still has a lot of inventory in her stamps that she needs to get rid of. So she's going to continue to carry what she can in foiling, um, but the stamps are all on there. Get what you can get while you can get it, and check back weekly because she does have specials on um, on there. Like if you buy a certain color, you get toner pack, or you get, um, what's the other thing she was giving me? Oh, the um, St. Patrick's Day kit foilables. So um, keep an eye on her website for that as well. All right, I am just going to cut one or two more and then we're going to get to foiling here. I am using the new mink because I want to burn off that smell. In fact, I had it plugged in and running and Leah's like, what's that burning smell from across the room? So I want the stink off of there. Okay, here's something that annoys me with these ugh, other foiling companies. The, the two pages stick on top of each other. So now I kind of, yeah, I did. I cut through the second page here on the foils. Drives me nuts. Hate that. Hate it. Hate it. And like I said, I'm trying to keep the different brands Deco Foil, Mink, which is American Crafts, and of course, the best of the best Creative Vision stamps all separate. I'm going to grab a couple pieces of Gina K, too. Gina K is Deco Foil. <laughs> let's use let's use a piece of this orange and a piece of this blue thermo web deco foil same company hi linda oh mary you're very lucky I did see the hero scapes. I haven't purchased any of them yet. See, they just happened again. I pulled a okay. orange and a blue. I don't have any Brutus Monroe foil, but Brutus Monroe is the same as uh, Deco foil. It's the same as Gina K. So it's the same. Can I get a sheet of this out? Come on, let's go. There we go. Well, just one, not three. Or four. Oh my gosh. Come on. All right. All right, let's get to foiling here. You guys holler at me if you don't see me write down what I'm using. Let me move my little cutting plate away here. This does not fit in the Cameo if you're trying to do foil quill foiling, just so you know. It doesn't fit. It's too thick.
Thank you, Kiki. I actually need to go get a touch-up because they're getting all raggedy. Okay. So in this corner, deco foils. Okay. Over here, mink foils, which is American Crafts. Oh, I think I can always bring in more if I need more. And then over here, I have the um, Creative Vision stamps. Okay. Now, where are my sheets? Here they are. Now, the toner ones, the toner printed ones, these come in a 12 by 12 sheet. I cut them down to 6 by 6, so I have a whole bunch. Um, so, I have my, my mink carrier sheets, and at the end of this, I'll link everything for you guys. Here are the toner ones. On the back of the directions of the packaging, it said these need to be on setting 3. When we switch over to the clear ones, they need to be on setting four because their paper is um, a little thicker. And I will also try to remember to tell you the names of the colors if you're interested in them. Okay, so I'm going to write mink, um, deco foil, or the best of the best. CVS. I'm going to write that on a couple. Mink. Deco. CVS. And if you get a chance, Tracy is doing another giveaway on her channel. Oh, you're welcome, Kiki. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Stacy. Yeah, it doesn't. Stacy is uh, honorary vice president of the Snob Club. Yeah, I just use the magnetic mat for um, cutting the foil, just, just to use the ruler to hold it down. Okay, now hopefully we have enough samples here to do each one. Okay, let's see how well I can do this. Um, I should dust each one too, to be fair. Okay, this one has to be mink foil. So these are some big, beautiful blooms. Mink foil. I print. I cut out all different um, colors. Oh, this one's pretty. We'll do this one. This one, I believe, is Nana's Roses. It's a nice light pink. Um, somebody had emailed me a question about... Um, again, I just have to do my disclosure. This is mink foil or toner foil. This is not the same of, as hot foiling. So do not get them confused. If you are looking into using dyes or the foil press or the spell binders or the um, go press and foil, that is hot foil. Completely different from the system we're doing now. I like doing this system because it is easy and fairly inexpensive in my, uh, in my opinion. Um, so we are doing what's called mink foiling or toner foiling. The difference is this foil does not have an adhesive built into it. What happens is the toner heats up and melts, and as the toner heats up and melts, the foil then sticks to it. So not the same as foil press or um, spellbinders. Keep that in mind. Because everybody always says, oh, can I use this in my foil press machine or can I use my Gemini hot foil so I just want to give that disclaimer quick I am trying to make sure that I get the dust wiped off and flatten these before I put them in there that was the deco foil that is the purple watercolor called lapis watercolor and Nancy screwed up already This is CVS. At least I caught it. Try to do that again. 
that's CVS. This is going to be mink oil. Mink, American Craft, same thing. I know, because it is hot, Barbara. You're right. I have the Cameo 2. That's why it won't work for mine. Because the... Um, the back of the machine is too thin to allow the, um, oh, not being fair. The back of the machine is too thin to allow the steel mat to go under with magnets. I mean, it probably would work if I would do washi tape on it, but it doesn't bother me. I use my little low tack mat. So I looked into a scan and cut today and they're like three to four hundred dollars. I'm gonna pass, but thanks. Those of you that have one, you're very lucky people. I'm very envious. Get in there. All right, here we go. So I don't own a Cricut. I've never tried to use a Cricut. Um, when they were when they first came out against the silhouette, I did a lot of research on the two, and what I liked about the silhouette and what I didn't like about the Cricut at the time was that the Cricut you had to use their, um, what do you call it? Their um, blah 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 blah. Can't speak. Um, those cartridge things, and so when the silhouette came out, and I saw that I could make my own designs that's when i decided to go with silhouette because pretty much anything on your computer you could use on the silhouette now things have changed since then that was probably i don't know 15 20 years ago and now i mean they're all pretty equal the cricket the scan and cut and the silhouette in terms of what they can do they all have different niches like i love the scan and cut can um scan images and cut them out you can do that with the silhouette machine you just have to manually um, scan it in which is kind of a pain in the butt so I think they all have their own little niche of, of how they do things So I did get the little Cricut, and I agree, I think it is pricey. It was $180 with the bundle. The card making bundle is what I got. However, I like the small size of it that I can, you know, that it can be left out and used pretty often. I mean, it looks smaller than the, I, I know it's smaller because I saw it at Michael's actually the other day and it was like oh my gosh it's so tiny it's so cute but I like that little card mat so you can just go in there and cut on the front it has all those designs you can just use the app and design um, with it and I'm not if I want to cut big vinyl pieces and do big things I can use my silhouette for that so I'm not using it to replace my silhouette I'm using it um, in addition to my silhouette I saw a lot of people complaining, oh, that's a waste of money, $180. You can buy the real machine for $200. Well, I think that's not true because it depends on your situation. Not everybody has a large crafting space. I'm trying to make sure that I double check the back of these and don't mess up the order of the foils here and I'm trying to remember to dust them and reading the notes here yeah I think it's the perfect size too for a craft maker I mean a card maker some people live in apartments some people you know just live in small areas and they can't have all of that stuff in their space I know that I'm very lucky to have a whole basement full of junk right Kiki Kiki's seen it
yeah, the registration marks help out a lot. If you can remember to do them, that's all. I just don't play it enough with my silhouette machine. Uh, yes, that is mink. So I did probably spend more than I should have spent. Oh, and <laughs> the Allentown Stamping Show is coming up at the end of this month. Who's going? I want to know who's going. And I'm going to make Leah and I shirts that say Nancy Stamps. So if you're going to be there and you see us, please, please say hi. We love it. Oh, I am brushing them to keep the dust off, just to be fair. Because sometimes you get dust particles from the desk, you know, just everyday life. I don't have any pets or anything, but, you know, I do a lot with embossing powders, glitter, things like that. So you want to dust your project, and you can use a Swiffer too, and then dust your foil, and that'll keep the black spots off. You know what? I want a pretty red foil for this. Let me see here. Hold, please. I have to stand up on the chair because I'm short. If you hear me fall down, don't worry. Leah can call 911. Why are you laughing over there? This is not funny. You're going to have short curl problems too. Oh. Okay, this is mink foil. I had to get it down off the top shelf. I'm wondering if the Joy will be able to handle foil quill. I didn't see anybody ask that. So I'm wondering that. And here's the other way I look at it. You know, I do these YouTube videos. You guys are going to want to see if it works or not. I know not everybody bought it. Just like the toner stamp pad, big fail. Um, so... I know you guys are going to want to see it, so if I can save someone the heartache of buying it and being disappointed if it is a big fail, then I'm glad to do that. And, again, I have a seven-year-old who's pretty freaking crafty, and I don't want her touching my silhouette machine. So if the Cricut is easy enough for her to use, and I can teach her the right way to use it, then she can have it. So there was a lot of benefits to me. Now, I will say I did buy it early in the morning. Had it in my cart with extra, um, you know, other things I saw. When I saw that there wasn't any $5 shipping, I didn't finalize my purchase. I just kind of left everything in the cart. Went to work, came home from work, saw that it was still on TV, went back to my basket. The other items I put in my basket all sold out. But the today's special was sold out, so they switched from the vinyl kit to the card making kit and the price dropped so I bought only that and then I only paid the um, five dollars shipping I can't get this foil to line up in here static cling my enemy okay here we go get in there that's quite obnoxious smooth it out let me say here. You don't think the foil quill and the joy unless they make a new adapter. Someone did a video using the foil quill with the joy. Oh, that would be cool. I'm going to have to look for that. Bye, Kiki. Deco foil. Oh, where's the... Freaking deco foil is not. Uh, I got it. Calm down, Nance. Calm down. No, I get so frustrated so easily. Yeah, that was another thing I saw people complaining about was, you know, they all the accessories they made force you to buy the new Joy stuff. But you can use 
you can use any cardstock, any vinyl. You don't have to buy their stuff. That infusible ink, you can use that. You can buy, you can cut it down, you know. Um, so keep that in mind. I didn't buy any of the infusible ink or the vinyl or anything because I saw that Michael's and Joann's had buy one, get one half off. So I'll just go there and buy it. Well, right? Okay, good. We're moving along here. Creative Vision Stamps is the best foil ever. I saw Bunny. That's only if you paid more than the $5, I think. I only paid $5 because I only got one thing, so I'm not going to complain about that. We're going to do some unveiling here in a second. Uh-oh, too much foiling. Cut that down. Now, I am not doing this testing to compare foilables, Okay. I'm only doing this to compare foil. That's why I'm using all the same foilables here. Okay, we need another color of mink foil. For the record, yes, I think I do have every color of mink foil. <laughs> Can't help it. Foiling addict, foiling snob. Did you guys giggle when you saw that FSC announcement go up on? <laughs> my scissors are sticky. They're not cutting my foil right. There we go. I think I cut this big enough. Nope. Oh well. We're just gonna roll with it because that's how I roll. Because I'll cut it down the card front size anyway. So whoopie do. Mary, I said everybody is a member of the Foiling Snobs Club as long as you have high standards for your foiling. We always want our foiling to look good. We want good foiling products. We want good foiling application. We don't want any black spots or dust or anything that would hinder the outcome of our foiling. So, yes, you're a member. think after this one I only have one more to do and then we can start doing some unveiling well we know Nancy's gonna use that new ladies night on this one this is ladies night oh what a night Now for mats, I will say I do have Cricut mats that I use in my silhouette. Again, there's no rule that you have to use certain things. If it's better for you, then you know use, use what you can get your hands on. Now I do want to show you guys this example. So see where the um, 
the toner was not covered in foil there, what's gonna happen now is as this went through the mink, that toner is gonna heat up and it's gonna stick to my carrier sheet, right? So my carrier sheet is going to have some black marks on it here. You see that? You just take a little bit of um, fingernail polish remover and it will take it off. Now, the question is, can you refoil this? You can, but it's probably not going to be as good of coverage because it's lost a layer of the toner, if that makes sense. All right, we have three more quick little polka dots we'll run through. I almost did it again. I did almost do it again. Nance, you fool. CVS goes to CVS. We're almost done. You can cut them, Stacy. Deco foil. I've seen people use kitchen cutting mats in their machines. This is the new Star Mink Foil from uh, Heidi Swap. It's so pretty. That piece isn't big enough. What about this piece? about to do some unveiling. And again, I do like using the mink over a laminator. If you're gonna be doing a lot of foiling, I know Tuesday morning often has minks on sale. Um, if you can find a mink, I, I will try to notify you guys when I see the minks go on sale on Amazon. Um, I do recommend carrier sheets, these plastic things over parchment paper. They do tend to just keep everything kind of even keel, like get less wrinkles in them. Um, you can use them over and over and over again. You can clean them when you get toner stuck on them. So for me, they're worth it. If you get the big mink, you can cut them down to smaller sizes. And you want to make sure you dust and let everything cool down before you unveil it. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way a second so we can unveil here. All right, that one's still cooling. Okay, I'm just going to start pulling stuff off here. Let me see. I'm going to move my phone over so I can read your comments. Yeah, two-way zig glue is what I did on one of my mats. Okay, this is the mink foil. Ooh, remember I almost put it in wrong as CVS foil. So this is the mink foil. I got it in this little tube here. You get uh, six and a quarter by 12 inch sheets. You get four of them. It was originally $4.99. I picked it up on sale for $2.99. Now, my biggest qualm with all of these other foils against Creative Vision stamps is that the foil is very flimsy. 
You can see that when I'm cutting it, you can see when it goes through the machine, it very easily kind of wrinkles and goes out of way. So that is what happened in this case here. And we have some spots that didn't get foiled because there's three little wrinkles in there. So this is not 100% foiled. There's a lot of spots that need to be touched up. Now, on a good note, this is a very busy image. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So this isn't one most people are going to notice. So if you're going to mess up on one, this is okay to mess up on just because of how busy it is. And I'm going to try to put it in the light where you guys can see those three spots. Um right there one two three where there's wrinkles in our foiling because it just it wrinkled going through the machine okay let me see if I can find the other flowered ones like that. I think I tried to do most of them in the same color oh here's one this one is the creative vision stamps the same pattern this is called Nana's roses it's a very pretty light pink and you can already see the difference. This is a thicker quality foil. Whatever carrier sheet they use with their foil is just much thicker. So less wrinkling, less bubbling, more adhesion on the foil to the image. This is a foiling snob quality right here. Whoop, whoop. That is excellent. And of course, we keep our scraps because we can use those on toner sheets. Ooh, that's really pretty. And I'm not a flowery kind of chick, but that looks good. All right, where is the deco foil one? See, now they're all out of order. Spots, spots, spots. Animal print. This one's animal print. Squares, squares, squares. What's this one? Diamonds. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Diamonds. Uh, this one is definitely animal print, and I think this one's diamonds. Okay, so this one's this is the deco or the thermo web, yeah, deco foil, um, purple lapis watercolor, which is really pretty. And this one came out pretty good. Yeah, because it's a busy image, it's kind of hard to see some of the difference in colors there, but there's some dark purple, there's some lighter purple. Very, very pretty on this floral image. Now keep in mind, because this is on gloss paper, very similar to the Creative Vision Stamps foilables, this is a little thinner, but you can ink over this, you can marker over this, not alcohol markers, watercolor markers, um, color pencils, distress ink. So if you wanted to color these flowers in, you can do it either before or after foiling. I prefer doing it before foiling because I don't want my foil to get tainted with any kind of markers, but you can do it after if you decide to do it after. Um, but this came out okay. There's a couple of spots where the foil is um, not adhered properly, like on the very tips of the flowers. That's just the quality of these other foil companies. I've brought it up before. So there are tiny little specks that are where the foil didn't adhere and it's kind of sticking up. That's why I'm kind of wiping it. And you'll see these little flecks fly off of it. Again, it's good. It's just not as good as Creative Vision Stamps foil. Okay, let's move on to these funky diamond shapes. So this is the deco foil. This is another watercolor piece. I think this is lapis watercolor. I'm sorry, amethyst watercolor. Lapis was the purple one. So this is amethyst watercolor and it's got some blues and yellows in it. The um, two packs of paper, Connie, I picked up at AC Moore. They are Heidi Swap foiling um, packs. Okay, so this has got that funky cool image and same problem I had with the other deco foil one. Oh, this is deco foil or the other mink one is the foil got wrinkled down here in the bottom and so there's a little like scratchy look here where the foil got wrinkled and it's just because it's cheaper foil. There are some spots where it's not foiled very small places. And there's a couple of flaky spots. I'm gonna have to brush it off. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's flakes of glitter or flakes of foil coming off of there. Okay, so not bad, not great. All right, this one is Creative Vision Stamps foil. We'll save that one. 
Okay, this is the mink foil. This is the brand new one from Heidi Swap. It's like got these cool squares. This is called Silver Square. I picked this up at Joann's. Can you guys see that holographic? It's like these diamond squares. It's pretty cool. It's like a disco ball. And unfortunately on this one, you can see all the missed spots. Oh boy. All right, so there's quite a few here. At the top here, this side here, there was a little wrinkle, thin foil. There's some missed spots there. So still pretty good. I love that holographic look. It's very futuristic digital looking. Um, but it's not 100%. It's like 90%, 95%. Okay. I saved the best for last, which is our Creative Vision stamps. Yes and no, Stacy. When you put it through the first time, what happens is the air bubbles, let me show you here on this one, air bubbles get trapped under the foil. So if you run it through again, you're going to have the exact same image. The only way to fix that is to take the foil off and put a whole new piece of foil on here. Try not to use this foil. And honestly, it's just wasteful, so I don't recommend doing that. I just say take some two-way glue and, and touch it up. But Remember, these are six by six panels. The average card that I make is standard A2 size, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. So to me, it's not a big problem because I'm gonna chop it here and chop it here, and then I'll put a sentiment or a ribbon on there, and then there's really only one or two spots that have no foiling, and I can do the zig glue pen on there. Thank you for asking, Stacey. That was a great question. Ta-da! Perfect foiling. Now, it didn't foil in the corner there because I cut my foil too short. But, okay, let me just eyeball it here. All the little fine points are foiled. There is one tiny spot right there. Actually, it foiled in the middle. It didn't foil on the outside. There's a couple of spots down here on the ends that didn't get foiled, but it's pretty good. Pretty freaking good. Oh, this is the new one that looks like an oil slick. This one is called Northern Lights, I believe. I'm pretty sure this one's called Northern Lights. This is the new Creative Vision Stamps foil. So it's got these rainbow colors. There you guys can see a little bit in the foil. All right, moving on. This is Gina K Deco Foil. It's the orange sparkling stars. This one came out pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Now see like this, because it's orange, if you wanted to make this look like a cheetah and fill it in with distress ink and maybe make it like, I don't know, brown or black or something, you could, you could go right over this and it would look cool. This is pretty good. I love those, the little sparkles in there. Okay, now this one wrinkled up. This one was my fault because I didn't cut it right. This is the mink foil. This is purple mink foil. So the little wrinkling there, I will take ownership of that. But again, it's a very busy design. Most people probably are not going to notice it. There you guys go. I'm, I'm up trying to remember to make sure I put it at different angles so you guys can see it. But there is some wrinkling there. Okay, this is the new uh, Ladies' Night from Creative Vision Stamps. Fabulous. Oh, <laughs> it's so cool. Because not only is it animal print, but it's animal print inside of animal print, and it's purple. Let's see here. There we go. Got to pick up the shimmer for you guys. That came out really good. Okay. This is like a checkered pattern. This is the Creative Vision Stamps foil. Pretty good, pretty good. That red is called Ruby Slippers. 
and it's your traditional red. This gets used a lot. In fact, I was just looking at my roll. I should probably order some more. Laura, I need more ruby slippers because I use it for Christmas. I use it for Valentine's. I mean, you just always need red. Fourth of July. Okay, this one is the red mink foil. Pretty good. Not too bad. Couple spots of dust. If you compare them side by side, you really could not tell a difference. They both look pretty good. That's pretty good. That makes me happy. All right, this one is the Deco Foil, which is the sparkling blue from Gina K. That looks great. I think because this is a really simple design, it came out great for all three of them because it didn't challenge the foil. And what I mean by that is when you have foil that has a lot of little, in, or a foiling sheet that has a lot of little intricate twists and turns and pieces, what happens, like I said, is you can see that the air gets trapped under the foil there. So once it starts to go through the machine and starts locking itself in, that foil starts to stretch and go in places or not go into places where you need it to go. So this being a very simple design did not cause any issues in it, and all three of these panels came out beautifully. Okay, so here is the polka dotted one. This one is Creative Vision Stamps. I like this one because it's a solid image. So we'll really get to see how the foil does on a full solid image. So uh, pretty perfect. Pretty perfect. Got a couple dust spots over here. I'll just cut those off. But this is what it means to be a foiling snob. These foil, these circles are all perfectly foiled. It looks like you bought patterned paper like this. But you can customize it to any color you want when you do foiling. So that was um, the Queen's Crown from Creative Vision Stamps. This one is called Summer Rainbow. This is from Deco Foil. Okay, so again, this is where the difference is. There's little dust spots there. There's a crinkle in the foil there, there, there. So there is a difference. I love these colors though. Love that fuchsia. Cannot wait to see the new fuchsia color coming from Creative Vision Stamps. Okay, and then the last one we have is the new Heidi Swipe, uh, Heidi, blah, 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 Heidi Swap Mink Foil. This is the Golden Stars. And it has little confetti sequins of iridescent stars. This one came out perfect. This was the best one. That is awesome. Oh, there's a couple spots down here. But again, they're on the edge, so I don't worry about it. When we're not on the edge or the middle like that, I don't really worry because in the middle, I can put a sentiment or cover it. And on the edge, I'll cut it down. This one came out great. That's really cool. Okay, so those all came out of the pattern pack. Let me show you. Um, this one here, the paper pad, and it has um, 12 different images. You get two of each one. And like I said, I just cut them down to six by six. Oh, wrong one, this pad. And AC Moore's going out of business, so they had it 60% off. And then it tells you on the back here, heat setting three. And here you can see all the different designs on that one. So those are the toner ones. I'm interested to see how these other ones turn out. These, it says I have to go to heat setting number four. And it's red. It'll turn green when it's ready. So it's blinking red. 
and then when it's ready, it'll turn green. Um, and what's different about these sheets is they're transparent. They use some kind of mixed media on here. So it'll be interesting to see how these come out. I save all of these foil pieces because we can still make backgrounds with them. Right, Stacy? We'll get in our endless loop of foiling. Okay, so I don't know that we'll do all of these, but we'll do a couple of them. Uh oh, let me write on the back again before I forget. Where'd my pen go? Oh. Can't even see what the design is on some of these. of these and then see how they look. If we need to do more, we can do more. Okay, so first one says Creative Vision Stamps. They have a clear medium on them. Like um, you guys have seen, if you've seen me use... Um, Mod Podge or Deco Gel, what is it, Transfer Medium, uh, Transparent Texture Paste. That's what they used on these. So they printed them with a clear medium, and now what's going to happen is the same thing that the toner does is it's going to heat up, it's going to get sticky, and the foil is going to stick to it. So same idea, just a different medium. This is Creative Vision Stamps for that one. Hi, Denise. Yes, you can always cut um, your sheets. They sell these in 12 by 12 sheets if you need to cut them a little bigger. See, there was a piece of dust in there. I could see the dust. Um, I don't want to use that. I want to use some pretty purple. We already have this out. Let's use it. piece off of here. Honestly, I forgot I had these big rolls of foil until I was like, wait, I have multiple foils and they're on the shelf behind me. Terrible at cutting these. The file folders, you can store them. I mean, I store mine with my foils. Um, you don't really need to do anything special with them. It's just a, a high heat capacity plastic. Okay, I'm going to try to make sure this is nice and smooth. Cut these jaggedy edges off. have to invest in foiling only scissors like some people have ribbon only scissors I use my same scissors for everything for paper for <laughs> cutting foam foam sticky pads I think I need some special foiling only scissors 
Don't use those scissors. Those are special foil scissors. Come on. Yep, basically keep it flat and dust free. You got it, Mary. Hi, Bridget. Don't mix up your foilings. If, if you are doing hot foil, keep your hot foils separate from your mink foils or your toner foils because you do not want to mix up your foils. You'll be very disappointed when you go to do a project and the foil doesn't stick. Yes, foiling snob scissors. I'm going to make some merch. That's what the kids all say when they're watching their YouTube. Mom, can we buy this merch? Get out of here with that stuff. I buy merch, crazy kids. Let's see what other colored deco foils do we have here? I kind of like that purpley color, so we'll do some more of that. Stamps, foiling snob scissors. Fiskers, call me. <laughs> exactly. I need. If somebody's a graphic designer, we need a um, foiling snob club members uh, sticker, and I'll cut some out of vinyl, and we'll. We'll mail that. Oh, did you guys just see what happened? He decided to take a nap. He was like, I'm done with your foiling nonsense. I'm out of here. I'm taking a nap. So I'm going to assume that's a built-in safety feature for the mink to shut off after it's been used for so long. And mine was kind of running for quite a while. What time is it? Yeah, we've been on here for an hour. Never fear. We always have a spare mink now. Let me move this mink out of the way. That's pretty terrible that I have two minks. good people. Mermaid scales. I got some of that. Hold on. Let me get this all cleaned up over here. We got some mermaid scale ones. Okay. This is deco foil. Let's make sure we're doing this the right way here. Wait for our mink to heat up. <laughs> right, Mary? <laughs> Azor, what is your question? Is it a question between the hot foil and the toner foil? Is that what you're asking me, hon? Okay, we're ready to go. the design on this one. It's super tiny. Okay, but it says Creative Vision Stamps on the back of it. Foiling 
the Mafia Club. <laughs> well, welcome, Azor Muse. You can check out, I have lots of playlists on foiling, the difference between regular foiling and hot foiling. Um, no, I'm not kidding. I'm going to show it to you. Hold on. Um, so we have these sheets that have, a, they have a printing on them. I you know you can't see them on camera, but I'm cutting pieces of foil and putting them on here and you will be able to see them in just a few moments once I reveal them. So I'm just going to try to get through quickly foiling these. This is another mink foil called Pink Gold Ombre, which looks similar to the Deco Foil uh, Sunset, Sunrise, Summer Rainbow, but this has a lot of neon kind of orange in it and pink. This is just like an ombre. So similar but different. So there is what's called um, mink or toner foiling. Mink or toner foiling, um, you use either a laminator or a mink machine. A mink machine is just very, uh, uh, it's a laminator on steroids. It's a super hot machine that has pressure and heat. And what that pressure and heat does is it heats up the print that's on these papers that you can't see, it's invisible. And once the foil passes over it, the foil will adhere to that, to that print, to the medium. So, um, and then there's another thing called hot foiling, and hot foiling is a little bit different. What hot foiling does is it uses dyes and a different type of foil. The uh, different type of foil has adhesive built into the foil, and when the foil gets comes in contact with heat, um, now here I, I'm just using this extra piece here. When the um, foil comes in contact with heat, it will transfer from the dye because there is adhesive built into that foil. So two different foiling systems. We are using what's called toner or mink foiling here, okay? And I have this little protective sleeve that keeps it protected in the rollers of the mink machine so that it doesn't get all eaten up like this started to do here. Yeah, we, we use them for card making, yes. What's this one? This is that same little bitty thing. I need, I need some more deco foil. This is called Amber Watercolor. I think I went through this little foiling watercolor phase, guys. Because I have like all of them. Oh, that's the perfect size. All right, I have a serious question for the ladies. I don't want to offend any of the men that might be in here. So Nancy had to go for her annual, you know lady checkout today and I painted my toenails before I went because I was embarrassed oh see this is two pieces of foil again I was embarrassed that my toenails were not looking on par and I knew that was the only thing that the doctor was gonna be <laughs> seeing so I want to know how many else people else make sure they paint their toenails when they go to see that doctor. <laughs> Barbara says she wears socks. <laughs> the nurse is like, oh, are you here for your uh, annual checkup? And I was like, yeah, I'm here to get the cobwebs cleaned out. Then the doctor's like trying to make small talk with me. He's like, how are your kids? How are things going? I've been going to them for, you know, 20 years now. I'm like, everything's good. 
And I'm like, it's the year of 2020 for me. Like, everything's going so good. I got a new job. Like, you know, my hobby's going good. My great kids are going good. And he's like, good, good, good to hear. And then I, uh, he says, oh, um, you're not due for your pet because you had one last year and you'd only need to go every two years or something like that unless it's abnormal. And I said, I'm going to add that to my list of the great things about 2020. <laughs> Yep, this is what happens. You're a lonely old maid. <laughs> Let's see here, what else? Paint your toenails, right? Stacy said I leave my socks on too. Socks, socks. See, I didn't think about that. That, my office has like five doctors. I've seen all of them. There is one woman. I do prefer to see her if I can see her, but I really don't care. I mean, they called me last minute and said, hey, we can squeeze you in. Do you want to come in? I was like, sure, let's just get it out of the way. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple more and then we are donezos. Thank you, Linda. It doesn't really matter to me. I know they're just there to do a job. And my doctors are all old guys. So, And I've had both kids with the same doctor's office. So, I mean, like I said, I've been going there for 20 years. They've seen me through three, you know, two marriages, two kids, three serious relationships. So, I mean... No big deal there. Um, this one says echo foil. Okay, we're just gonna use this other piece of this. We're already hair. Oh, look, it just happens to fit. Yeah, because I cut two pieces at the same time. Okay, this is the last one we're gonna feed through and then we'll do some revealing of these sheets. Mink sheets. The other thing, again, is just to make sure um, that your um, blah, 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 stuff is all cooled before you reveal it, your foiling. Okay, mermaid foil, I didn't forget. I don't think she has it anymore. Of course, it's going to be Creative Vision stamps. Let me show you what it looks like. Here it is. It's called... Ooh, it's called Mermaid's Tail. And it's so freaking cool. I hoard this and do not use it. What? You had a friend that had a removable spider <laughs> tattooed to her butt before her colonoscopy? <laughs> That's awesome. I want to be friends with her. All right, so this mermaid tail, and like I said, I'm pretty sure she doesn't have it because every time she got this stuff, it sold out so fast. But it has these scale shapes on it. It's a holographic, almost like a bronze color foil. And then you have these holographic, tiny little scales on there. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Can you see that? Very, very cool foil. And it's called Mermaid's Tail, if you can find it on Creative Vision Stamps. But she's always sold out of this. I don't think she has it. The other one that's really cool is the new blue one that has the little rocks in it. This one. I like this one. Barrier Reef. This one's cool. Can you see it has little rocks in there? That one's cool, too. I like that one. And then... Where's that other teal blue one that has like, it looks like waves. You can use that one. It's kind of like this. Where's the blue one? 
Oh, this one. I like this one. This is called Caribbean Cruise. I think that would look cool as mermaid. Kind of teal waves in the foil. You could get away with that. That's a brand new limited edition one. Okay. Who wants to see the reveal? Okay, here we go. Uh, Denise a lot. <laughs> Too many. That's why we're the Foiling Snaps Club. We have our addiction. Oh, one of these got foiled twice. CVS, Deco. Yeah, Deco foil got foiled twice. Eh, not going to hurt anything, right? Oh, no, that's a different design. Okay, so this first one is um, mink foil in the purple again. This is a more solid image. Oh, boy, this is why you have to use number four on this. So there is definitely some texture here because of the medium. It is raised. It's actually not too bad looking. It's different, I will say that, but it's evenly distributed. That's why they want you to use a higher heat on this foil because of how thick the cardstock is and how thick this medium is. That's different. I have never seen that before. That's kind of cool. I dig it. Okay, and then this one is the deco foil, which is the amethyst. Okay. This gave us a little more solid of a look. Wow, this is different. So this one has a little bit of a distressed look, but it's cool because it's not black underneath, it's clear, so you can get away with that. Where this is the exact same paper using different foil, and it has way more of a solid image to it. That's kind of cool. Let's see how Creative Vision Stamps does. Creative Vision Stamps is like, maybe my machine just didn't heat up enough with the first one. That's way more solid. So we have the mink foil, which maybe my machine just wasn't heated up enough. We'll say that. And then we have the deco foil, which is really pretty. That looks like a watercolor stamped image, and using that watercolor foil really goes well with that. And this is the Creative Vision Stamps foil. That's cool, I like that. That is so different. All three of them look great. That's cool, I like it. Okay, this is a more line image. No, it's not smooth, it has like a, a texture to it. So this is the orange foil, this is Creative Vision Stamps Orange Wildfire. Yeah, it has this, it's almost like they screen printed it. So there's a texture to it, it's raised. This came out pretty good. Very pretty for a thin line image. This is the deco foil, um, the uh, bronze ombre. Oh, this is beautiful. This has a little silver, a little bronze, a little gold in it. Very classic looking. Like if you're going to make grandma card or a sympathy card, this is pretty. Now this paper though is very matte. It's not coated paper like what we used before. So if you're going to color on this with ink blending or with markers, it's not going to blend very well on this paper versus this paper. So just keep that in mind. This coated paper is smooth. It's flat. You can ink blend on it and it's going to look okay. This is more of a matte paper. It does have a raised image to it. Um, you can still color it, but I would recommend maybe using color pencils instead of markers on this. Okay, this is the mink foil, ombre, yellow, red, pink, whatever. And I put that extra piece at the bottom and it foiled fine. This is pretty. It's pink, gold, pink. Oh, these came out really cool. I've never done these before and these look nice. Keep our spare pieces so we can make other backgrounds with them. Polka dots. Always a true test. This is Creative Vision Stamp Sandstorm, I believe this one's called. It has like the, um, the gold iridescent lines, perfectly foiled. 
beautiful. You see all the sparkle in that foil. Okay, the next one is the holographic squares from Mink Heidi Swap Foil. Also oh, beautiful. Now the gold ones are more solid than the silver ones. So these have that kind of distressed raised look. These are definitely more solid than these are. Not a huge difference. Most people probably will not notice. I noticed because when I looked at the reverse sheet, I can still see foiling stuck in the circles. And on this sheet, there is no foiling stuck in the circles. That's how I noticed it. Okay, and then this is the Deco Foil Bronze Ombre. And this is very solid. Interesting. Interesting. This will make cool like coffee card because of the colors. So, I mean, all three foils perform okay. Definitely, no doubt about it, the Creative Vision stamps, hands down, the best foil. It's easier to cut. It's on a thicker material. It releases better. Um, you get way more colors, too, of course. Let's not forget that. You get a better value for it. So I am going to lean my bias towards Creative Vision stamps. But, you know, there are other foiling options out there if you're in a pinch and you need to run to the store. Just keep in mind, if you are part of the Foiling Snob Club, it may not be as good as your Creative Vision stamps foil. That's all. So, and then here's the toner ones again, just to guys give you guys a quick rundown. And the difference is the toner ones do have a black printing in the background, so you can see where it skipped or missed, and you need to just be aware of that. Where those other ones, because they were made with a clear medium, you don't see any dust marks on them. I love these little plaid ones. These came out cute. Yeah, so now I'll keep them in my stash, and if I need to make a quick card, I can literally just cut these to card front size, foil a foilable sentiment, and stick it on the front, and I'm done. You really don't need to embellish these a lot because the foiling speaks for itself. That's cool, that square holographic background. And again, I will go and link everything for you once we're done here. I'll link the Mini Mink. I will link the Carrier Sheets. Of course, I'm going to link Creative Vision Stamp. She's got two brand new pink colors that just came out. I cannot wait to get them. I think my package arrives on Saturday, so I'm super excited for that. Um, and I will link, if I can find these two um, Toner Sheets uh, packages for you, I'll link those for you as well. So I'll put everything online. Um, give me about a half an hour to get that done because it takes a minute for the video to fully process and load and then I can put all the links up for you. If you have any questions in the meantime, don't hesitate to comment down below. Um, check the description box for anything. If you want to email me privately, you can email me here at nancystamps15 at gmail.com. Don't forget next week to check out the Mod Squad Challenge. For the Kitchen Sink Stamps uh, Challenge, again, my little hint to you guys is that it's going to have something to do with wheels. So I'm giving you a small heads up there. Um, I am still working on the, the stamp pad idea. I'm waiting for some other supplies to come in before I do another video with stamping, attempting to do stamping with foiling. Um... Carol, did you get the two new pink colors? Because I didn't get those yet. Mine's coming Saturday. Um, my, um, Not Too Shabby Shop is going to have a hop this weekend with some adorable stamps. Can't show them to you yet, but the, the hop is going to start this weekend. So you can go check this out. Check those out. Don't forget that... Um, Tracy Schultz is doing a giveaway on her channel for hitting 500 subscribers. I still need to pull the names for my giveaway. I just need to get around to doing it. But I'll keep you guys updated to that. All right, this is just a piece. So I went in the next day and I um, 
tried to use the toner ink pad again and stamp these tiny little paw prints. And the, the toner pad was actually a little thicker because it was starting to dry out. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Maybe that's what we need to do is give it some dry time. Well, it ended up pulling my paper apart when I tried to stamp on it. And then I was like, oh, well, this is no good. Um, here, I'll show it to you. See, I tried to stamp on here. Look, it, it pulled all my paper up. So once that toner ink starts to dry, it's garbage. It's garbage already. Um, so I will keep working on that. Let's see how dry it is now. It's been, what, two days, three days? The Mod Squad Challenge, you do not. You can submit your picture under your Pinterest, under your Instagram, under your Facebook page. You just need to have your picture somewhere. So the, the pad ended up sticking to the lid. Oh yeah, it's like gross. I can't put my finger on that smell. I've smelled it before. It doesn't smell like toner. It's almost like a paint marker. But yeah, I tried to stamp with it and made a big blobby mess. So I have some other supplies coming. I'm not done. I'm not going to give up yet. We'll try some more things. If I can get it to work, then I'm going to try to get it to work for you guys, you know? Because we, I believe we do need a product. And the mink paint sold out, so we can't use that anymore. These are the, these are the tiny little footsies. Tiny little foot paw print I used. Yeah, see, that didn't work. I'm going to load them. Bull. I mean, again, if you're into distress, we don't want distress. We want beautiful foiling. Duh. Anyway, I'll play with it. I'll work on it for you guys. Okay, that's all I got for tonight, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up on your way out. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're not a subscriber, please click the little bell and then click the notifications so that you know when I'm online. And again, if you're catching the replay, you can post any comments down below. And questions, you can post down below or email me. Just give me a little bit and I'll post all the products we used if you are interested in ordering any of them. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, Mary. Bye, Carmen. Bye, Stacy. Bye, Linda. Bye, Tanya. Bye, Dee Dee. Foiling Snob Club adjourned.